by my field. Somewhere between harvest and autumn last year, Dave and I went for a walk up Pex Hill. Guy had not long left, and we were entering an uncertain time of the vacancy on the back of recently going through the AI process and prayerfully making the decision to stay in this building. A number of people within our community were on the move, some moving out of Liverpool and some moving within Liverpool. And there was a general feeling of being shaken up like a snow globe, all the scattered snowflakes tumbling and falling through, through the air to rest in new places. We didn't know how long we would be without a vicar, or indeed who would come. As church wardens, it was very easy to feel a great weight of responsibility for everything, everybody, and the building too. And there was certainly much to discuss and ponder. As we walked and talked, the new church mobile rang and Dave took the call. I sat on a bench at the edge of the wood, overlooking a newly ploughed field. A fallow field that to all intents and purposes appeared empty. But is it? As I looked, I watched birds swooping down and resting on the ridges of the overturned earth and feeding on whatever small insects, grubs and seeds were to be found there. Around the edges, a few wild flowers still bloomed and grasses grew. Brambles held late blackberries and elderberries dripped from a bush nearby. Scattered on the ground in front of me were nuts and acorns. A dog ran past, followed by their owner, and people walked along the footpath at the side of the field. When Dave came off the phone, the conversation between us went something like this. I said to him, what do you see? And he said, a ploughed field. I asked, what will grow there? He made a few educated guesses, but the truth is, we just didn't know. But what we did know was that come the spring, something would be planted tended and eventually harvested. It seemed to me to be a wonderful metaphor for St. Brides. Like Jeremiah, we had on God's instructions and or the prompting of the Holy Spirit bought the field in our decision to stay here in this building, tatty and in need of restoration and development as it is. We, like Jeremiah, are investing in the future that we can't quite see yet, but we believe in. This is our field. We have rich soil, ground for our being, and the soil is alive. It is teeming with life that we cannot see. Whoops. This, there, are, there is more living things in this teaspoon of soil than there are people on the planet. All manners of living things from microscopic bacteria, ants, earthworms, grubs and insects, they all live in that soil. Foxes, badgers, moles make their dens and burrows in the soil along with many other creatures. Plants, flowers and trees <coughs> have their roots in the soil. We cannot live without it. <coughs> All life on earth is dependent upon it. It is more precious than gold for it sustains our life here on earth. You 
are like this teaspoon of soil. This community here at St Bride's and in the wider parish is teeming with life. All the skills and qualities we need to bring God's dream to life here amongst us is here already. You are it. It is often too easy to miss or take for granted what each of us brings. We can get so caught up in what we do that we sometimes fail to acknowledge what we really have right here at our fingertips, the soils that sustain us. You are the soil, every one of you. In a moment, we're going to take a little time to look around at one another and in the silence of our hearts, appreciate the qualities and gifts that we each bring. The invitation is to look beneath the surface and see what makes up the soils of St. Bride's. So for instance, we might look at Derek and Joyce, sorry to just single you out there at the back. We might look at Derek and Joyce and say they make and serve the tea, bring us biscuits and cake and afterwards do the dishes every week. And they do. And we really appreciate it. But underneath what they do are the qualities that they bring. Steadfastness, loyalty, commitment, care, friendship, kindness, to name but a few. And it is such qualities that make up the soil that we are and will grow from. So I invite you to look around at one another and it doesn't matter if you're new here or to come for the first time today, because in fact you've probably got better eyes than the rest of us to see, to see what's beneath the surface. But the invitation is in silence to just take a look around at all the people here <coughs> and just mindfully note in your hearts the qualities that they bring. You may have to turn around and look at one another. <laughs> <laughs> But in silence, if you can, and just register what are these qualities. And I'll put my glasses on so I can see you better. <laughs> So without naming who, I wonder if you can just shout out perhaps what a few of those qualities that you are aware of in the room. Trust. Trust. Mm -hmm. Integrity. Mm -hmm. First for justice. Yes. First for justice. Yeah. Doggedness. <laughs> Yes. I 
to say? Acceptance. 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 Yeah. 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 Compassion. Yeah. Something a bit more than that. Say again. <laughs> yeah. So how does that make you feel to see that and to hear people reflect that back? How does that make you feel inside? Warm. Warm. Could you spell that for me? <laughs> I think very grateful, very honoured yeah. to be part, very grateful um, to be part of such a community. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that all those things, all those words make up a whole. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah. They do. I wish you were standing here where I am and could see what I see. Because you are so much more than a teaspoon of soil, you are a spectacular field. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your faith, your trust, your belief. In the building project, in our future, and most of all, in each other and in God. Amen. Amen.